folks join us for a little bit of winter trout fishing. Stay with us. Yeah! Pocono Outdoors Guy is supported by Tony Maja Products. Hi, I'm Eric Gustav. I've lived in the Pocono Mountains pretty much my entire life, and I am a diehard trout fisherman. Uh, I do fly fish a bit, but one of my favorite things to do is go after them with some spinners, some little Rapalas. Uh, I'll tie my own jigs too. Uh, and my favorite ones to target are the wild brown trout. And we have plenty of them in the Pocono Mountains. Uh, I'm out here with George, the Pocono Outdoors guy today, and we're getting after some, and uh, I think we can do it. Okay, so this looks like a nice little pool here. What, what do we got and how are we going to fish this? So we're going to try some spinners, we try some jigs. Uh, as far as the species, we got rainbow trout, we got some brook trout. Uh, I caught a tiger in here the other day. Nice, nice. Uh, brown trout, there are some wild brown trout in here as well. Uh, stocked by the state and some come down from the Pooklean Club above the bridge here. Now it's, it's kind of, I mean, we're in early February, is uh, spinners, isn't that a little bit fast for some of these fish? Believe it or not, you talk to a lot of the spinning anglers, they really like to use gear this time of year. Even okay. the fly guys, some of them will come out and start throwing spinners. I don't know why, typically you wouldn't think of a cold-blooded animal wanting to chase anything in these cold temperatures, but then again, this winter's been pretty warm. Sure, sure. And uh, it's like opening day conditions. So what do we got here? We got some water coming down, a little bit of rapids. Yeah, uh, we got how, how are we going to here. fish this? Just oh. top down or what? Yep, top down. We're not. We're going to try not to cast our shadows here. Just going to approach the water quietly and we'll just cast upstream at a 45 and then just kind of let it swing down through. Slow roll it near the bottom where these fish are staying. Uh, if they seem more aggressive, we'll burn it a little faster. Okay. Well, let's get a couple in the water and see what we can get. All right. You know, people don't really think about it, but we're in the beginning of February right now, and these wild trout, they're, they're active. You know, they don't hibernate. Uh, I mean, sometimes if it's in the teens, they're not really going to do much, but here we are today. It's only about 30, 31 degrees out, but we just had a lot of rain come through, and these creeks are up, and they're chasing after spinners. So we're going to find out which pools they are in, and we're just going to try multiple different methods, from spinners to plugs to jigs, and we will get on them. Well, we're on our third creek of the day, just trying out some different stuff. Uh, it's a tough bite today. The weather's changed. The past three days have been really, really good. Uh, but the water is down now and it is very clear. So these fish are a lot more skittish. And it's just taking a lot more to get them to do anything. So I'm in a slower pool here, some deeper water. I got a jerk bait on. Just gonna see if I can get these uh, trout to bite. Guys, that's one of the keys to being successful is if it's not working, you gotta move. You gotta look for water that's gonna get you on the fish, find something that's productive. You know, as we're walking around here, the, say the water's clear, it's low. So it's giving us a real hard time, but Eric's on the job and we're gonna get it done. There's one. Yeah, fish on. Mm, little brown trout. Wild brown trout. About average size for a wild fish in these waters. This time of year, this is mostly what you're going to get in here. Mixed in with a couple hatchery rainbows and hatchery browns. Now barbless hooks came right off the second he landed in the net. It is a treble, not a single. It helps the spinners move a little bit more naturally in the water. But uh, as long as you pinch those barbs, they'll come right out the second they hit the net. And we'll keep them in the water until we get a shot and a release. All right, it's always good to keep them in the net, keep them in the water while handling until you're ready to take your photo and release, you know, keep them wet. The fly guys preach it. Plays the same in spinning too. But my hands are wet. If you're gonna get a photo, keep them close to the water and just out like that. And here we have a beautiful Pennsylvania wild brown trout. This is not a stocked fish.
damn it. They are hitting so light. They're stacked in here. So we've been trying a couple of different things. We're moving around this little stream. Eric wanted to try back around this little horseshoe. Uh, we've been trying to get them to chase spinners and they have been hitting, but they've been hitting like super light. So uh, Eric's gonna try switching over to a, a jerk bait, maybe work that real slow. Now he thinks there's some bigger fish in here. He had a couple really nice hits, but couldn't get him to stay on the line. So we're gonna keep working them. You guys stay with us. Well, I saw these brown trout rising in here and you know typically that would mean it's over for a spin fisherman if they're focused in on a hatch taking emergers or if they're taking uh, something off the surface a dun or whatnot uh, but you could also use these little plugs and make for competition the smaller fish you're trying to eat the bugs that the bigger fish are trying to get at so you put that little competition in there they might not be hungry but they're gonna just smack it you might catch some nice fish doing that too He's in there, I know he is. Another little guy. Another little wild brown. Eat. Yeah, he's got another little wild brown trout. Gonna get a nice little release on him right now. Making cannibalism work for me. If I can get it up here. The brown trout Rapala. These little ultralight minnows. These are the greatest things. If you know there's brown trout in there, they will hammer them. They love eating their young. And apparently the young ones like eating each other too. This guy's only about eight inches, and maybe eight inches, and he hit that. Get a nice little release. With fishing conditions tough, Eric and I decide to try it again on day two. Well today, George, we're going to be trying this pool right here. Uh, it's about 25 degrees. It's supposed to get up near 40 today, but uh, the water is up. So this is going to be really good for spinners, hopefully. And uh, we're going to be trying some different tactics here. We're going to be trying here in some of the backwards running eddy currents because the fish will hold up here in the higher water. They'll take advantage of these little slack water spots next to current where they could easily just jump out and grab at food. Uh, and also it holds the structure better. Uh, we're also gonna try here in some of the slack water near the tail outs in case they wanna be down deeper, just kinda waiting for things to happen. So we'll see if we can't get into any today. What you got there, Eric? Well, we got another wild brown. Oh wait, yep, it's another wild brown. First cast of the day. Second cast, I'm sorry. He's right out in the slack water, just as I had suspected. They're holding steady in there due to the cold temperatures, but they're still very much active. The barbless hook came right out. And we're gonna keep them in the water because these frigid temperatures, you really don't wanna be taking them out in the air. It's not good for their eyes or their gills. So we're gonna get a release on this fish. Stay tuned. Awesome. All right, what we got there, George? Well, it looks like I got myself some kind of a trout. Uh, it looks like a nice little brown. Let me get him netted here. Boy, he did. That was that hit that spinner. It's a pretty one, huh? Yeah, that's a real good one. That's a nice wild brown trout. Yeah, so that was actually what, my second cast? Your second cast. So let me uh, wet my hands a little bit here. See if I can get this hook out. Hands wet. Huh? All right, let's get this guy out. And what's well, a pretty one. Look at the color on that thing. Just beautiful. All right, let's get him back in the water, huh? There he goes. Beautiful. Right back down underneath that log there. 
Good job, George. Thank you very much. Nice spot. Absolutely. Let's get more. Absolutely. Uh, I'm also a member of the Broadhead Trout Unlimited chapter here in the Pocono Mountains. Uh, and I do a, a bit of conservation work with them from time to time, uh, such as stream renovations. You know, we just finished up work on uh, Cherry Creek in the Wildlife Refuge. Uh, that is now open to fishing through a permit process. Uh, it is a single barbless hook, uh, fly or lure. Uh, you can use spinning gear, you can use fly gear, but uh, you do have to have a permit and a date set in mind. There's only three rods per day allowed on the creek, but I definitely recommend checking it out. And, uh, there's some good fish in there, so definitely do it. One other thing about uh, you know the Broadhead chapter of Trout Unlimited. Trout Unlimited as a whole group is not a tackle specific method. They welcome all kinds of trout fishermen and I think it's very wise that many more besides just fly fishermen who join their local chapter and get involved because uh, we all share a love for cold water conservation. You know, we all love trout and uh, the places they live. And clean water benefits everybody but uh, you know it's right now it is a fly majority group and again I do fly fish a lot but I also do a lot of spin fishing for trout as well. It's just another tool to get the job done. And uh, I encourage more spin anglers to get involved with their local chapters again because uh, you know, we're stronger in numbers and we could get these places and these fish preserved a lot more. Damn it, come on. Stop. Well, that is a beauty, huh? That is an absolute beauty of a wild brown trout. The spinner tactic worked, George. What's that, about a 16? Maybe a little more? Yeah, I do have a measuring tape, but I'm not going to keep him out of the water too long. But we'll, we'll get him out for a quick, quick picture. I mean, a video, little video. So, you got my hands wet. Woo! It's a beauty. That is, he's got a little kite jaw going. And I'm in the net there. I'm going to ask if he wouldn't mind taking a photo for me. <laughs> but yeah, my tactic worked, George. I changed up from the jerk bait and put on the Gold Thomas spinner. And uh, he chased it right up and grabbed it right at my feet. And took me for a nice little ride. All right, we're going to get a release. He's ready to go. He's wiggling in the net. He's out of here. Great job, man. Thank you. Get it. Well, with that trophy, we're going to call it a day. Special thanks to Eric Gustav for a couple of great days on the water. We'll see you soon.